Hey, Carlos Lago with Edmonds here, and that is the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach 1. And boy, does it have some big shoes to fill. Not only does it have to do the Mach 1 name justice, but in terms of pricing, this costs like the low mid $50,000 range to start out. And that means in terms of the Mustang hierarchy, it sits between the Mustang GT Performance Pack and the Mustang Shelby GT500. That's a space once occupied by the Shelby GT350, a car that's very near and dear to my heart. That means the Mach 1 needs to deliver really exciting driving dynamics, on-track performance, as well as enough civility so you could drive it every day. That's a really tricky combination. In this video, we're gonna explain how it attempts to do those things, if it does those things, and we're probably gonna spend a lot of time judging the driving excitement bit because, hey, it's a Mustang Mach 1, why wouldn't you? If you like this video, hey, let us know in the comments below. Also click like and subscribe, it really helps us out. And if you don't like this video, tell us too in the comments. We wanna hear your opinion. Check out the links in the description for more information about this vehicle and others like it. And also visit edmunds.com slash sell my car to get an instant cash offer on the car, truck, or SUV you wanna sell. First, when we're talking about the Mustang Mach 1, we're gonna talk about a bunch of other Mustang variants because this uses a lot of parts from cars like the GT Performance Pack, the Bullet, the GT350, and the GT500. They're all represented here in some capacity. Let's start talking about the body. I think this Mach 1 looks really cool, especially in fighter jet gray. Yes, that's the name of the color. And that grill too with those fog light inserts. They're totally non-functional. They just look cool, but you could argue that looking cool is a function. Anyway, when it comes to actual functionality though, this body has more downforce than a standard Mustang GT performance pack according to Ford. And when you add the handling package like this one's equipped, it comes with all these other aerodynamic goodies that increase downforce significantly. Hi. Can we just admire how great these wheels look? They seriously might be some of the best looking wheels currently on a new vehicle. Anyway, they're 19 inches in diameter, 10 and a half inches wide up front, 11 inches wide in the rear, and they're wrapped with Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. Non-handling package Mach 1s get narrower wheels and they're wrapped with the less aggressive Michelin PS4 tire. Now behind the wheels up front, you get 15 inch rotors with six piston calipers. That's the same brake package that you get on the Mustang GT Performance Pack. And behind that are standard adaptive dampers, the Magneto Rehological or Magneride quality. You also get stiffer uh, any roll bars, stiffer front springs, stiffer rear subframe bushings, and on and on. And also the brake booster comes from the Mustang GT Performance Pack too. So a lot of good stuff happening underneath this guy. As we talk about engines, it's another time to acknowledge a tragic loss from the year that was 2020, and that is the 5.2 liter, 8,250 RPM flat plane crank V8 that powered the Shelby GT350. Rest in peace, you beautiful bastard. You were too high revving for this world. Anyway, the Mach 1 doesn't have that engine. It uses instead the five liter V8, or at least the one that was improved for the Mustang Bullet. So 480 horsepower or 20 more than you get from a standard GT. And if you look over here, you see adjustable strut top mounts that you get as part of the handling package. Well, this isn't the adjustable part, that's a cap, but you probably figured that out by now. Get the handling package. I think that's what it comes down to. As for transmissions, there are two. The base is a six-speed manual, and it's the Tremec unit that came from the GT350, which is different than the six-speed manual you get in a Mustang GT. This Tremec manual has very slightly shorter gear ratios, but more importantly, likely improved durability. That transmission also comes with automatic rev batching on downshifts and no lift upshifts, which is a lot of fun. And you also get a Torsen limited slip differential. This Mach 1, though, has a 10-speed automatic, which, yeah, you can option with the handling package, which should make for an interesting combination. I'm eager to see how it works on track. That, that sounds all right. I miss that really high-revving 5.2-liter V8 from the Shelby GT350, but this 5-liter isn't a complete substitute, but it's still satisfying. And one of the reasons why it works in this particular car is I swear that automatic. Look at, listen to that gear change. It happens so quick 
and the space between the gears is so short that it has its own thrill to it. Now, I'm sure also if I were to have a six-speed manual transmission and I were able to no-lift shift, that is, keep my foot flat on the gas while I'm doing an upshift, that's very satisfying too. But it's nice to know that this automatic has its own thrill. That's really fun. Now, one of the key differences in this engine, of course, between that V8 is that this has a 7,500 RPM redline versus that high revving 5.2 liter V8. But I gotta admit, this is okay. At the same time, this is really fast. Driving around Big Willow, California, Southern California racetrack, a very fast racetrack that requires a lot of confidence, a lot of traction, and a lot of stability and benefits with a lot of speed and yeah this mustang delivers that speed big gear change as you get into seventh gear you can hear the hear and feel the revs drop when you shift into seventh but when you shift into seventh that wide open throttle you're moving at a pretty good clip yeah that shifter response is really really nice that's a trick too with automatic too these really smooth gear changes that keep the engine working right in the sweet part of its power band. So it's able to just keep delivering that 480 horsepower in this case. That's super satisfying. Now I could go on and on about V8 engines. I love V8 engines. They sound great. They feel great. They respond great. But let's talk about the rest of this Mach 1. As a substitute for the GT350 or as a new incarnation of the Mustang Boss and Boss 302, this I have a high expectation for how this should drive and how it should feel around a racetrack. And I gotta say, around this big, fast, wide open racetrack, I'm feeling the level of confidence and control I would expect from this kind of Mustang. Yeah, I'm moving around a lot. I've got firm suspension. It's a track-oriented car. That's okay. But I also feel like there's enough control in the suspension that the bumps aren't setting where I want to place the car. I can put the car on the line of my choosing and really explore the track's limits and my own abilities. And then on the straight, hammer down and let that exhaust just blare away. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And so the steering has a couple different modes to increase the effort. I'm in the track drive mode setting. I've got the exhaust set to track mode. It's all appropriate. And the experience I'm having behind the wheel is fun. It's also, to be frank, I'm going really fast. This is, I'm not gonna lie, a little intimidating. The speeds that I'm able to, to generate while talking to camera, driving a Mustang, it's, 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 it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this thing cooks. Okay, so it's got that driving excitement, check. Track performance, presumably check. If you're into track days, I figure you get this with the six-speed manual because that's just what you do. And I'm sure this thing could deliver track performance over a very aggressive lapping session. One thing that may come to mind is durability of the brake pads and the tires, but these Cup 2 tires, throughout my experience driving them on a variety of sports cars, can withstand a lot of abuse. These large brake rotors, those six piston calipers, the additional brake booster, that's all geared for additional durability over extended lapping. Same thing that goes with all the coolers that this has, and some come from the GT350 and some come from the GT500. I honestly can't keep track but you've got a transmission cooler, you've got an oil cooler, you've got a cooler for the fluid in the rear end, it's all built in. So presumably, you're gonna have a lot of satisfaction driving this on a racetrack. Now, when it comes to the daily driving stuff, you're gonna pay the price for having a track-oriented car. This is firm. It's noisy inside. Those are things that you kinda have to expect with a sports car of this caliber. It's not something that is gonna be punishing, it's not something that you wouldn't want to drive, but that's just part of the deal you're making. It's part of the equation. 
So to wrap up, is the Mustang Mach 1 a substitute for the GT350? No, it could never be. Nothing can ever replace that high revving 5.2 liter V8. It's just that cool. But that aside, this is delivering a very good driving experience that I think does both the Mach 1 name proud and anybody who's looking for a sports car racetrack experience from their Mustang. This is, this is doing the trick. Yeah. Rock on. <laughs> my, I watched this. It looks like you're working out. <laughs> Record elliptical workout. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs>